Hey guys, thanks for coming down to the channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how I made this. So yeah, looks pretty cool. If you can't tell already, it's Henry Cavill from The Witcher and Man of Steel. So how would you make this yourself, you ask? Well, I'm going to show you how right now. Step one, reference. So what we're going to do first is look for reference or the face we want to create. We need to find good reference many of the front and side profiles of the person. Once we have the reference, we can import it into Blender with the appropriate viewing angles. Step 2. Sculpting. So as always, we want to start with a cube and subdivide it until it looks like something else. Then go into sculpt mode and try and sculpt it around the reference so it matches as best as possible. After this, we can turn on Dynatopo and start getting into the nits and grits of the face and model, making sure to capture the essence of whoever you are trying to sculpt. A good tip is to press Alt-Z to make everything x-rayed, then try and drag the geometry to best fit the reference. After we have finished with the primary features, we can add a multi-resolution modifier and import a brush skin texture. I'll have a link for one in the description. This allows us to create fine details like pores and wrinkles, which will come in handy later on. Step 3. Retopology. So if you have followed any of my other videos, you will know how to retopologize a face well. So I'm not going to go into serious detail about it in this video. All I can say is that you've got to be patient on this one, or it will actually drive you crazy. Step 4. Hair. So for the hair, it mainly revolves around creating empty vertex groups, then weight painting in the areas you want the hair to grow. Do this for the eyebrows, scalp, and eyelashes. For the scalp, I found that two hair systems work best, one with very thin hair and the other with more thick, clumpy hair. For the eyelashes, I found it best to comb them in three different directions, across, down, and up. For the eyelashes, we're going to add them in manually, so don't add any numbers in the hair settings. Instead, make sure B-spline is enabled, then head to the Particle Edit tab and add them in manually. After we've finished that, we can head to the settings and change your children's hairs to simple with a bit of clumping on the top to achieve that eyelash look. Step 5. Bake the normals. So remember those wrinkles and pores we sculpted? Well, they're coming back to haunt you in your dreams, because we're going to get that high-res model and drag it over this retopologized one. We are then going to duplicate this retopologized model and scale it on its normals by going into edit mode and pressing Alt-Z. Now we can hop into the bake settings. Make sure you're in cycles with the CPU set to on. Then go into bake, choose normal, hit select it to active, and make sure the retopologized mesh is the active object. Also make sure to create a new texture in the shader editor and have it selected while doing this. Make sure to select the scaled normals object as the cage. Now we can bake. Step six, textures. So for the texture of the face, we're going to use an array of techniques. The first is to just fill the mesh with the appropriate skin color. Also make sure to add skin blemishes in the correct spots. Also make sure that you have unwrapped your mesh before doing this. Now we're going to UV unwrap the mesh a second time, but this time choosing project from view, which creates a projection map of the face that we're going to use with an image texture. To make this work, Firstly, make sure you have your original UV map selected, then go into the Texture Paint tab and change the brush settings to Image Cloning, and then selecting Image Paint Slot option. With our desired image, we would like to paint with, as well as the corresponding UV map. After this, we can go to the Shade Editor and connect the texture we just made into the color, then connect the normal map to the normal socket, we will also want a noise texture for the roughness, scaled up by quite a lot, and to also change the subsurface radius to around 0.9 and change the colour to red. For the hair, we can just add a principled hair BSDF with the desired colour of, of the melanin. For the eyes, I will leave a download link for a blend file containing the eye models and textures. Step 7. Lighting. For the lighting in the scene, we'll be using area lights facing the side, top and back of the model. 
You can change this however you like, but remember to place the lights where it gives the model the most desirable details. Also make sure the world color is set to black, and also add some kind of background to separate your object from the darkness. Now all we need to do is hit render and enjoy the result. Thanks for watching this video guys, if you liked it give it a like, and if you want more be sure to subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, I'll see you guys very very soon in my next video. Sealish Productions, out.